Hello, hello, welcome. I am Evangelist Michelle Hope Walker, and so welcome to Michelle Hope Walker Ministries. All right, so today we're gonna dive right in, and today is February 14th, 2021. Happy Valentine's Day, happy love day, as I call it, happy love day. It's about loving <laughs> each other. Okay, so today the subject is not being afraid to stand up to people who mistreat you. Not being afraid to speak up. That's my key word. Not being afraid to speak up when people mistreat you. Now, I'm putting the focus more on family and friends. Because a lot of times, if you're like me, you don't get too caught up on people that you don't really see all the time. If they say something or do something to you, you just, you, I don't know, don't bother you as much maybe. At least for me, it doesn't bother me as much because I'm like about to be around them all the time. I just stay focused on what I need to do with them. Sometimes I like customer service, bad customer service people or whatever the case might be. Yeah, unless I go to that store all the time or something of the sort or even, you know, just people even you're working with or other people, you know, unless, unless you have to see them all the time, you know. But I'm really focused more so on family and friends because those are the people that can hurt us the most. And those are the people that sometimes we have more of a challenge with speaking up to, you know. Um, and again, uh, we're coming from the spiritual perspective, the spiritual perspective. So even in the spiritual perspective, God teaches us to speak up for ourselves, you know. So that's why I say um, I pray for those that only remember the Jesus, the baby Jesus, that, you know, just don't say nothing and just sit there in the crib. <laughs> because the real Jesus was up walking around doing what he had to do. And the real Jesus turned them tables over saying, you're not going to make my house a house of things. You know, that's the real Jesus. Okay, you know what I'm saying? People like to picture this Jesus. It's just, oh my God. You know, Jesus spoke up in his own way, you know what I'm saying? And he taught us to speak up. Now, again, in all of this, we want to remember the key point is love. So why would you be speaking up to family members or close friends about um, them mistreating you? So it's not about their life or what they do. It's about them mistreating you, <laughs> you know. Um, and for whatever reason, that can even be a challenge on speaking up to them. And it could be because maybe you have spoke up before and was like, look, I don't like when you talk to me like that. Or I don't like when you do that to me, you know, and they just went ballistic. And you're like, <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> It's like I, 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 I just said what, what happened, <laughs> you know. They start talking to you about the way they wanted you to come to them. They start talking about everything they feel like you've done to them. And then here's the thing with this one, you all. When you're speaking to a family member or or a close friend, someone just so you can write this anyone close to you. You know, I'm really per se on family because sometimes those are the hardest ones and the challenging ones to speak up for yourself. Um, because you love them, you're trying not to hurt their feelings, you know, um, you're trying to keep the love intact, but that doesn't mean you have to sacrifice yourself and who you are and continue to let them mistreat you, you know, because you have some families, so the whole family know that they're mistreating a certain person, no one says nothing about it, they just laugh about it, talk about them behind their back and just even talk about them in front of their face, and, you know what I mean, yeah. <laughs> and then they wonder why people don't want to come see them. <laughs> So I'm trying to help you so that you can visit your family more, so that you feel more comfortable because some of you have been very, hurt very badly by your family and you don't want to say anything about it because they make such a big deal about it when you say something, you know, because then they start, you know, bullying you more when you say something about it, you know. Um, and so, you know, you just don't say anything at all, you know, um, which again, stress kills, stress kills and God don't want you dead. <laughs> <laughs> not till it's time and so um you know we just have to stay prayed up but again we're speaking up about what the family members are doing to us because we love them and we want to communicate with them we want to continue to to communicate with them we want to have this good feeling of them you know what i'm saying and again like i'm always telling people you know no one is perfect no one is perfect so when someone is telling you hey you know don't say that to me i don't like when you do that to me i don't i mean you know to me you respect that if someone tells me i'm doing something to them because sometimes we can be doing something not even knowing that we're doing a particular thing to a person 
you know so that's another reason why a person needs to speak up and tell you so that's why you should not get offended or you should not feel like you're a bad person because someone is telling you they don't like something that you're doing to them now they're not saying that about you and your life again this is about you speaking up to family members or other people about things they're doing to you so maybe they're calling you names maybe they're talking about you behind your back maybe you know when you tell them things in private and you have specifically told them this is for your ears only and and the next thing you know, the whole family knows and you're like, okay, how did you already know how it <laughs> And then sometimes they go, why didn't you ask? I don't need to ask. I know you said something. <laughs> oh, and for those of y'all that don't know me, I'm a comedian, actress, personality. And God has also called me to minister. So that's what I do. And God knows who I am. So I give it the way, you know, who I am. <laughs> but anyway, you know, so, you know, yeah, get, keeping everything in perspective. Again, we're talking about the spiritual. And when we speak of spiritual, you have to watch it. Because a lot of times, that's the demonic spirit. The devil is real. All throughout this Bible, it talks about how the devil roam around, even in uh, 1 Peter 5. Let's see. Let's, let me get my glasses on, y'all. In 1 Peter um. Five, it talks about how the devil is roaming around trying to get who all he can <laughs> he can get. <laughs> and the James you was saying so first Peter five verse eight be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And then even in Job, the book of Job in the Old Testament, um, when God was asking the devil what he'd been doing, he'd been saying roaming around trying to see who he can get. <laughs> You know, so there is such thing as the devil. I know some Christians and churches still don't want to acknowledge that, but there is a demonic spirit, an evil spirit roaming around trying to distract us from what we need to be focused on and doing what God has called and told us to do. So that's why we have to stay prayed up too, because that is another distraction spirit. You can go and look um, at my other videos. Well, I actually did a video on, um, you know, watch out for distractions. That's the devil. That's the mind spirit trying to constantly distract us from the things we need to be doing on what God has called and told us to do. And so, yes, the devil is not going to try to distract us with stuff that won't, you know, that we're not going to get distracted with. But of course, we get distracted with family members. <laughs> are doing bad things to us, you know, and, and, and just picking with us, bullying us, you know, just doing things to us, you know, because we love them and one we're trying to figure out, why would they do this to us? Don't they love me? You know, why would they do it? You know, and then they brush up, oh my gosh, just a joke. You can't take a joke. You can't, but no, no, it's not a joke because you do it too much. <laughs> you know? And so, you know, so the devil will go after, again, the devil will go after things that um, he know can um, get to you to try to distract you. But then also that's what we have to stay prayed up. But we also don't, we, we try not to let these things get to us. But at the same time, we still speak up on them. You know, because then you have, you know, the holy than now Christians, but my gosh, you should not give people your power. You should not let people, you know, do. and that's true. All true, but we're human. Hello, we're human. <laughs> you know, I remember one time just in dealing with my kids stuff, you know, God reminded me, you know, you know, you try to be perfect for your kids, you try to be this perfect parent, and you're not perfect. Get out of here, <laughs> especially when it comes to adult children. You are not perfect because sometimes they'll do stuff to you, and then when you tell them, hey, don't do this to me, then they act like they just, oh, my God, I didn't do it, you know, and break down and start telling the whole family different stuff about you and try to make you look bad, and you know you didn't do anything wrong, but ask them to not talk to you in that negative, bad way, and it was the conversation was between just you and that adult child. Somehow it becomes a family. <laughs> and you're like, how did all these people get brought in? And then I tell them, you have to watch that because, again, it's about love. So when a family member is coming to you, talking to you about something you're doing to them that they don't like, and so that's out of love, first of all, you know, because, you know, they love you enough that they're not going around the family talking about you, but they're actually coming and talking to you, addressing you because they want your relationship to stay good. You know what I'm saying? They don't have to run from you every time they see you because they know you're going to do something bad or say something bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they want to keep the loving and the kind, good relationship together. So um, they're trying to tell you the bad thing you're doing to them in hopes that you won't keep doing it. And that is the point. Like I said, when someone's telling me, if I'm, somebody said I'm doing something not right to them that they don't like, again, you know, you don't need to defend yourself or, or feel like you're a bad person. No, you just listen to them. 
And then it's your goal to strive not to do that to that person. Because sometimes you don't even know you're doing that to that person. And and then, you now if you need to say words, it might be like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I was doing that. You know, because sometimes we'll do stuff or we'll say stuff and we don't realize it's offending the other person. So that's good. Again, why people need to speak up. It's good that people speak up. It's not good you're doing a bad thing, but it's good that people speak up. And that's why, I mean, you know, um, I'm a college graduate. So through my college um, education, you know, communication has been one of my majors and minors, you know. And so you have to talk to each other. You have to tell each other what's going on because the, we can't read minds. The other person cannot read minds. And there's no reason walking around being mad at the family member and the family member don't even know what you're mad at them. <laughs> you know, I read somebody tell me if I've done something wrong I want you to come talk to me I want you just to just ignore me or walk around mad at me and I don't even know what I've done you know <laughs> at least tell me what I've done so I can you know rectify it so I can you know correct it <laughs> and that's just people in general you know but again I'm on more of the family and the close friends because I don't know if you like me, I, what other people think, I don't get too much caught up on them as much as with family and friends. And then it gets to a point I don't even get caught up on family and friends. And I'm like, you know, me and God good. And so long as me and God good, we're going to keep moving and doing this thing. I love y'all, but <laughs> I'm not going to let y'all, you know, tear me down and make me feel bad. I'm going to keep loving and love and love God, love me and keep going. <laughs> you know, I love you too, but I'm not going to allow you to be doing all these things to me, you know. Um... And you just keep going, you know, but you do at least try to reach out, you know, and you reach out in a kind way, in a loving way. And you want to do the one on one with that particular person. If it's different ones, so you want to do the one on one as much as you can. Now, when you're talking to them, if they start getting irate and defense, why didn't do this? Not you have to tell them, you cannot tell a person what they don't feel. You cannot take another person's feelings from them. So if a person is addressing you, a family member saying, look, I don't like when you say that. To me, I don't like when you say that about me. I don't like when you talk about me to other family members. I don't like when you try to make me look bad around the family, you know. And you can watch that jealousy in the family. Sometimes it's a lot of jealousy in the family, especially when you have family members is always trying to put another family member down. Sometimes it can be that that family member is jealous of that other family member because maybe the rest of the family is always talking good about that family member, and so they're like, mm, you know, they get jealous, you know, of the family member. You know, you know, uh, you remember. One of the sermons I did back when we talk about um, uh, Goliath, you know, um, so when we talk about David and Goliath and David, um, before even he threw the stone that, you know, knock out Goliath, he was just delivering food to his brothers at the battle. You know, one of his brothers, Eli, was getting all jealous, you know, what you doing here? And, you know, and, and, you know, he got mad. Eli got mad because David was just talking to somebody else about something, you know, that's jealousy, jealous, jealous of, you know. You know, and then start blaming uh, David, trying to tell David he was there up to no good. <laughs> You're like, uh, I didn't do nothing. Yes, you got to, and you have family members that are like that. You know, I know this is a taboo subject, and some people don't like to talk about it. I mean, it's even uncomfortable a little bit for me to talk about, it, but at the same time, I felt my spirit that God was letting me know you you need to talk about this with people because this is destroying families, it's destroying people, and separating people in their relationship with God. So again, we're keeping this in the key context of you growing in your relationship with God and you doing what you got to do, what God has called and told you to do. You know, I am always on. We got to keep it moving and doing what God has called and told us to do. So for some people, the 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 friction with their family or close friends or or with whoever. It, it is 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 um, bothering them to the point uh, um, that uh, it, it's challenging them and has stopped them from staying focused on doing what it is God has called them to. You shouldn't let nothing and nobody, no matter how much you love them, stop you from doing what God has called and told you to do. Now I have to put that in there because sometimes when you do even come the most respectful, kind way to the family members on letting them know, look, I don't like when you do this to me. Again, you're only focused on the bad things they're going to do. You're not trying to correct their life. You're not trying to control their life. You're not trying to, there's nothing about with them in their life. You know what I'm saying? But even in that, you will have them get very um, mad and evil with you. And now if you're talking to them about talking bad about you, putting you down and doing different things to you, and then for you to try to talk to them to help them to stop it so that, you know, they don't always make you feel uncomfortable comfortable and, and because you love them so you want to keep that loving because you're always kind to of them you're loving to them you don't see where you've done anything harmful you're not running around talking about them you're not doing you know what I'm saying things to them 
you know and so you just you know you, you don't want to run around talking about the media you want to tell them I don't do this you know to me it should always be an easy conversation because it should be like okay if the person saying you know first of all family y'all know you shouldn't be putting people down talking bad about people um, or mistreating each other from the first place so family member got to come to you you already know you're wrong so sometimes the reason they get all out of pocket and all because they know they wrong <laughs> know they wrong and so they don't like nobody telling them they wrong you know and again you're not telling them wrong about their life but you're telling them not to mistreat you i like to keep that in context you know of that's what it is you know you're getting them them about you're asking them to not mistreat you you know but i'm gonna tell you even when you do that sometimes they go get wild on you get crazy on you and you're like what in the world you know but like i really thought it should be a simple process because if you're telling someone, look, I don't like that when you say this about me, you do this about me, can you please stop? The person should be like, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that to you. Or if they already knew they were doing it, okay, well, I'm sorry, I'll stop doing that to you. You know what I'm saying? And it's that simple. Shouldn't be no argument. That is not the time for the other family members to start going down the list of what they think you do because they had all kind of time to come to you. See, some people don't feel comfortable having conversations about certain things, so they'll never say nothing until maybe then, you know, you're... You're bold enough, you know, because in, in bold, you got to be bold. You know, you all throughout the Bible, it talks about boldness. You know what I'm saying? So in, in Philippians, it talks about being bold, you know, um, in Ephesians, it talks about helping to be bold to say the things that I always say, you know, um, and Proverbs, it talks about helping me to open my mouth and boldly say the things that I need to say, you know, um, and Joshua 1, it keeps telling us, help us to be encouraged, help us to stay strong, you know, because it does take, you know, a boldness to be speak up to people because you don't know what they're going to say or how they're going to act. You're not meaning it in a negative way. You're really positive, so positive. But sometimes people go off and try to act like you have other motives that you don't have, you know. And so, you know, so it takes a lot to even speak up, you know, to people, you know. Um, so again, remembering too, this is about love. You're speaking up to people because you love them, your family members, and you want to keep a good communication relationship with them. So you're hoping that by you asking them to not do certain things to you that you don't like that they're doing to you that are bad, you know, that they will, like I said, should be a smooth, you know, okay, I'm sorry, I won't do that to you again. You know, and family member, again, it is not the time then to start beating up or bullying on the person that has just said that because you mad because, you know, they said, you know, and there's no reason to be mad because, again, we cannot read each other's mind. Communication is so healthy. That is one thing I learned in all my course. I was like, oh, my God, this is, you know, I start beginning to realize, you know, so many things in life can be resolved that people would just communicate because one person's thinking that one person's thinking one way, another person thinks somebody, and neither one of them is thinking the, the other way. You know, both both of them are very happy with each other kind, you know, and I'm talking about when people are thinking somebody's thinking something negative about them and they're really not, you know, so you have to talk, you have to communicate. So for you all that feel uncomfortable about communicating um, uh, about things, I mean, I pray for you and I pray that you can, because it will relieve a lot of stress for you to communicate with others. Now, again, we're not talking about doing this all the time because, you know, you're not going to get on the person every time. And let me not say get on, you're not getting on, you communicate with them. You know, because again, a lot of times, a lot of things will go past and you just ignore it. You don't let it get to you. But I'm just saying when God leads you that, you know, you pray about it. I always say, y'all, you pray and you talk to God and you let God lead you. You know, how God responds back to you is maybe in your spirit you'll feel a certain thing or something will come to your mind. You know, I think it's time for me to talk to that family member about that because they keep doing it, you know, and they keep doing it, you know. You know, so um, because if you talk to people all the time about things they did to you in life, you would spend your whole life, you ain't got time, you're talking every day to folks about, you know. So again, if they don't receive you, because even the Bible talks about, you know, if they don't receive you, you know, you at least try you know, and that's all you can do. You at least tried, you know. Um, you know, you at least tried. And that's all you can do is, is, is try. You know, it says Matthew 18, 15. If your brother sins against you, you go and you tell him his fault. Um, if he doesn't listen to you. Um, oh, well, you know, and then one scripture, I'm talking about, well, you knock the dust off your feet and you just keep going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So in a family context, you still love them. But then what you have to do then now you know, because you tried to go to them, they got argumentative with you, or they got mad at you, or then they went and talked about you more throughout the family or whatever. So you're like, okay, well, it's hard to do that with them, you know. So, or you wouldn't even be able to get 
out your point before they just went off. So they never even got a chance to hear what you were, you know. Uh, you know. So then within you, you have to stay prayed up and then you have to then come to terms on how you're going to deal with that person. Now, again, I'm a big component of no one's perfect. You know, even in your family, nobody's perfect. So you still want to choose to love. You still want to choose to strive to communicate with that person. So then you might have to limit your communications with that person. So you have to watch now what you say to that person. You know that they're going to go tell everything you you talk about. You have to maybe not tell them stuff unless it's stuff you don't mind everybody else knowing. You know, or if you know they're talking about you all the time, which that is, oh God, is the word. I can't stand because I'm such a sweet kind of person. I can't stand for anybody to, you know, talk about me, you know, just, you know, because I'm like, I'm so sweet. I don't talk about other people in a bad way, you know. Um, or for people to try to, you know, paint a bad picture of you because they're mad at you. So now they're trying to tell other family members negative stuff about you, you know, whatever, you know. Or sometimes you have family members that, you know, you've never really met. And the certain family members that like to talk bad <laughs> about you all the time has met the family members that they've already talked so bad about you. You, you know, the other family members are scared to meet, you know. <laughs> name of Jesus. There's nothing you can do about it, y'all. All you can do is just love people, present yourself the best way possible, and love on people. And like I said, you just pray, then you may have to watch your communications with them. Maybe watch how often you communicate with them. Watch what you say to them. Um, and sometimes give it. Just keep doing it. You can try to address it again if you need to. Then maybe bring in another family member on if you need to a third party or whatever the case might be. You might want it to be a neutral third party, not someone that also talks about you <laughs> with that same person. <laughs> you know. But then again, like I said, we got stuff to do. We got stuff to do. We got to keep doing what God has called to us soon. We have to watch it because again, this could be again the devil try to work through your family to mess with you in a negative way so you stop focusing on getting doing what God has called told you to do and so that's where too you just also have to pray like God you know I'm doing I'm loving folks I'm doing what I need to do and you I, hey I love them I'm just gonna keep going you know you gotta keep going you gotta stay on what God has called and told you to do because this person may never change that's the thing that dealing with anybody and trying to resolve a situation you cannot wait for the person acts the way you want them to act and again we're all different so it's not even trying to get a person to act the way you want them to act it's just you know you're asking them to not at least mistreat you but even in that that person may still keep mistreating so do you hold your breath until they stop no you may die <laughs> And so you just have to stay prayed up, keep doing what God has called and told you to do. You love on them. You just try to be as positive as you can with them when you're around them or when you're talking to them. You know, you still call and check on them. You still show them love, you know, send them gifts and different things like that. You know, if they do happen to get out of pocket on something, you address it right then. Hey, remember that I don't like you doing that, so please don't do that. And if they just get wild, well, you let them get wild and you just keep going. Because sometimes you just still feel you need to speak up on it, you know, regardless how wild or crazy they're gonna act when you do it you know but um you know and you love family so I'm a big proponent that you still just love them family you know you love them you love your kids you love your parents you love your aunts and uncles you know you, you love your cousins you know you love them these folks you know now a lot of times I guess I'm talking more to people's even closer to you so your kids your parent you know your parents you know um, and stuff like, I mean, to me, those are the ones that might really get to me more than, you know, some of the other ones don't get to me as much. <laughs> Just learn to ignore them, keep going. But, um, you know, um, and you stay prayed up, you know, you don't want to address things all the time, you know, but, um, you know, when you feel need to, you do, you know, and you just stay prayed up, you know, because you love your family and you want to communicate with your family, but it's not fair for them to bully you or beat up on you or, you know, uh, hopefully they're not beating up on you because I'm talking about verbally. It's not good for them to be able to just verbally abuse you and think it's okay because it's not okay. And even if not another family member speaks up for you, you have to speak up for yourself and you can't be afraid of them. And I know some people, again, when it comes to family, you're afraid if you speak up about how they're mistreating you, that then they may not want to talk to you or they may not um, talk to you anymore. Well, sometimes, you know, that's maybe a risk you have to take. You know what I mean? Because think about it. Do you want them to just keep badgering you and mistreating you or, you know, to not talk to you, at least when they're not talking to you? <laughs> They're not bullying you. I'm talking bad about 
about you. But I mean, we do want to talk to them, you know, in the name of Jesus. We love them, you know, so we want to talk to them, you know. But I'm just saying, you know, that's why sometimes we're scared to talk to family members or we may have that fear. But in the name of Jesus, the devil is so I'm not going to have fear. You know, even in the Bible, um, in Jeremiah um, 1 8, it talks about don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of how somebody's going to look or when you're talking or, you know, don't know. You say what you need to say and you have to speak up because no one knows what you're thinking unless you open your mouth and say it all throughout this Bible talks about speaking up. So that's why I don't know where Christians or people get to sing because you're a Christian, you're not supposed to speak up, you're supposed to humbly take it and not say anything. There's nothing wrong. That's why I say stay prayed up because there is a time to there's a time to speak and there's a time to not speak. You know what I'm saying? So in this case it talks about there is a time to, you know, there's a time for everything, you know. So you have to stay prayed up on what to do and how to handle situations. But the key thing is you keep loving and you don't let um, family situations distract you from what you need to be doing in your life and what God has called and told you doing. You keep loving these folks, you know, and, um, you know, and it's, it's not, um, a bad thing. You ought to address issues. You know, I'm always trying to just tell my family, it's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. That's love for people to address issues with each other, especially in the family, because you want to keep this love going and, and no one wants the next person to feel, um, you know, um, feel uh, less valued. Everybody should be feeling valued in the family. You know, no one should be mistreated and no one should be seen as less valued in the family, you know. And so you have to speak up. So I hope this has helped you. Um, again, um, I'm your girl, man, just Michelle Hope Walker, and this is Valentine's Day. Happy Love Day, uh, February 14, 2021. And um, so you can reach out to me on Twitter. That's Hope underscore Speaks. That's the line on the line. Hope and then underline, under, you know, on the line <laughs> Speaks on um, Twitter. Uh, that's Twitter. And then Facebook is Michelle Hope Walker Speaks, period. Listen. And Instagram is Michelle Hope Walker Speaks. So we love our family. We love our friends. We love those people close to us because for you all, it might be other people that are like family to you or whatever, you know. But they do not have the right to bully us. They do not have the right to verbally abuse us. And hopefully, they're not physically abusing you, you know, because most definitely you need to uh, then get away from them. But um, at least for a while, you can talk to them on the phone only or something of the sort. But, uh, <laughs> But anyway, so we love folks, but at the same time, um, you know, you, you, people should be treating you right. Don't get me wrong. You know, they do say, you know, it's sometimes a natural thing where family members may, you know, say a little bit of somebody just, you know, yeah, I don't even like that natural pattern or that, because I don't. I really try not to. You know, but um, when it just gets too overwhelming and just too much, you need to address it. You know, don't just run from your family. Uh, address them. You know, and like I said, if it's a challenge addressing it, you know, you just have to feel like at least you tried. You still love them. You know, so you have some people, um, they will get mad at you when you're dressed, but then all of a sudden they'll become more nicer to you or they, you know. And that is not always because like, you really wanted them to hear what it is you were telling them you didn't like so they can know not to do it. Because if they still never heard what it is, they're still going to keep doing it. Because they were so focused on themselves when you were trying to talk to them or whatever the case might be that they never did really hear. But again, that's when um, when they right at the time then they do something, not all the time, but everyone's going to be like, okay, what? that's what I was saying. Don't say that to me. Don't talk to that to me like that. Or don't talk about me to other people. You know, sometimes they do it right in front of your face. You know, we get in little groups, you know, at the family setting. But hey, don't be talking about me. <laughs> um, but again, at the end of the day, even when you ask people not to, you can't stop them. But what it is, is uh, just like any other person, you know, then you know you got to watch that person because you can't trust that person because they're always talking about you or, or saying bad things to you or about you. Um, you have to watch how you deal with that person. You know, because like I said, then it comes to the point that then it's back on you on how you, again, but the thing is, don't have anything in your heart against them. You still love them. You pray for them. You know, um, you know, you talk to God on how to deal with them, you know. Um, and, you know, again, I don't know your family issues. So, you know, maybe sometime God will say, okay, take a break, you know, or whatever, until that person get right or whatever. Again. But then again, to me, you got to watch that one because that person might never get right. <laughs> Somebody might be going on their person's head because <laughs> they may never get right. So are you never going to show them love? Or are you never going to, you know, so you still want to love them, you know. And uh, again, let me put this disclaimer in because, again, when I talk about things, I'm not just always talking about my family. I'm talking about just people as a whole and families as a whole. Again, but no family is perfect. So, I mean, it's no shame in talking about, you know, <laughs> 
giving scenarios of family things, you know, it's not like you're giving names, but anyway, so, um, God bless. And again, the key thing is because I want to keep you healthy and whole that you're out here doing what God has called and told you to do. If you don't have a relationship with God, ask God to come to your heart. Romans 10, 9. Have that relationship with God because I'm telling you, having a relationship with God makes everything better. So love you. Love your families. Get out here and do what God has called and told you. Don't spend a lot of time on, on drama. Don't don't spend too much time on that. You know what I'm saying? You, you try it and you keep it going. <laughs> and you keep going. Do what God has called and told you to do. So love you and love your family and happy love day.